to go as far away as I can. If I go out where there's no reception, I may as well be on the moon. There are small towns in Alabama that I couldn't go to and still have the service that I needed. I think for the broader community, fast, affordable broadband means opportunity. There's a real importance and a real need for connectivity. We need it as much as they do in the city. We need good service. Our mission is to be the best in the world at connecting customers to their world. We aim high, we step out, we take smart risks. We have demonstrably the best 5G network. We're in the process of making it the best network overall. We built the country's biggest and fastest 5G network to serve as a platform for innovation. We own the future. We're way ahead. Exciting new cases will emerge and scale on this incredible network. The future with 5G is bright, and it's already enabling amazing new experiences, a new era. Powered by 5G. You ain't seen nothing like this yet. I'm a renegade. That'll stop in a minute, I promise. There we go. Good to see everybody. Thank you for all being here. Always got to start a presentation with a little bit of T-Mobile energy and some insights on our culture. Hopefully that was, uh, that was helpful. Wasn't loud enough, was it, really? <laughs> Look, delighted to be here. Uh, I do want to thank Meredith and the CTIA team at the outset for putting together, you know, what's a fun and very fast-paced agenda. And I promise to do my best to maintain that fun and pace as we go through the next, I think I was told 45 minutes I had. Is that right? Oh no, okay. It's got five on the end of it, but. Um, look, there's a lot to talk about. I do want to provide you an update on the T-Mobile story to begin with, um, because so much has happened you know, in recent years with T-Mobile and its progression, both in terms of network and the overall business and, and the 5G story. And I do want to touch on Spectrum. Um, Many of you in the room, you know me. Um, I'm very passionate about our Spectrum story in the US, not just for T-Mobile. And so I will touch on that towards the end of uh, my comments. Um, get it out of the way, the beginning, I'm retiring. I think many of you in the room know that uh, later this year. So this is probably the last time you may have to put up with me talking at you for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but I'm not going too far away. Um, so this week I had my first uh, meeting on the president's end stack. So um, I'm pretty passionate about this industry and where we go forward. So I'm going to stay reasonably close and hound some of you on an ongoing basis, even if it's not with a T-Mobile hat on. So let's get started on the T-Mobile story. So um, four years ago I came on, I think it was this stage, it was pretty much the same setup. And that was a period within which T-Mobile and Sprint we're advocating for the combination of the two companies to deliver on a very powerful 5G promise and a 5G story for the US. And I like to think here we are three years since we closed that deal, April 2020, that we have really delivered on everything that I remember talking about from that stage and that we talked about with the FCC and the DOJ and the courts in New York and California and everybody else that was very, very interested in what would happen with T-Mobile and Sprint you know, joining and becoming a powerful 5G business. So here we are today, 326 million people covered with the T-Mobile 5G footprint. And that's from a nascent footprint if we went back three years ago. That's very powerful. This is one of the largest 5G networks in the world. Now, competitively, you know me, I'm always going to put something up that talks about where we are in terms of competition. This is by far the largest 5G footprint in the US. And our footprint at T-Mobile is greater than AT&T and Verizon's combined. So that's a turn the table story over the last you know, three years. 
And it's not just about footprint and coverage. It's about the quality and capability and performance of the 5G network that we've built. So 326 million people, almost all Americans covered with 5G now in the US. That's a statement. We've come a long, long way from where we were. Underneath that, we now have, with our mid-band spectrum, our ultra-capacity 5G, 275 million people covered, heading towards 300 million by the end of the year. And that's where the 5G story really comes to life. Some of the things I'll talk about in a second, where you see tremendous capacity, speeds, where you see new use cases really starting to emerge. So we said we'd get all that done. We had no idea, obviously, as nobody did, that we would enter into you know, a pretty disastrous pandemic for the world right, in 2020. But we battled through all of that. I'm incredibly proud of what the team has delivered over the last three years. We ran at this opportunity incredibly fast. We knew that rolling out 5G at pace was critical for the US economy. And our competition in AT&T and Verizon are working furiously now too. I'm not sure that would have all happened at the pace it has happened if it wasn't for T-Mobile and Sprint coming together. So great 5G story, great competition story, really a fulfillment of the promises that we made as a company and the reward that the US can see in allowing T-Mobile and Sprint coming together. So that's a little bit of the history. What does that all mean for our customers and our consumers? We've delivered and our customers are now really starting to enjoy the byproducts of this 5G network. So let's look at that quickly. We are seeing massive adoption on the 5G network. Almost two thirds of our customers now have a 5G smartphone in a very, very short period of time. Over 70% of the traffic on the network is 5G. That is a much, much faster growth rate than we ever saw in the 4G space or 3G. And so 5G is moving at real pace now in the US. And customers are really starting to enjoy the benefits and performance of this 5G network. To give you a flavor for that, we'll talk about use case and innovation in a second. But the average usage on our 5G network, on 5G smartphones today, is 35 to 40 gigabytes per month. Now that number in LTE, if you went back three, four years, average LTE story, it was between 12 and 15 gigs per month. So customers are utilizing their phones and enjoying their phones three times as much as they were. Now that's just with many of the existing services. Why is that? It's because the networks are just better. Coverage performance is better, video runs better, your social media is better. The things that you enjoy and you use your smartphone for, they work way better on a 5G network. And so we are seeing customers get great utility out of the 5G story that we've been unfolding. We're not done, we have a ways to go. There's gonna be a lot of innovation and new use cases that emerge, but the starting blocks are in place and we see customers really enjoying what's happening with 5G. Powerful. So if we then look at new use cases, and there's a lot of discussion about, oh, what's happening with 5G? What's the first big use case? It's home broadband, folks. So we started a home broadband business, fixed wireless access, really about two years ago. And today I look at this slide and I say what I'm gonna say, that T-Mobile is the fastest growing home internet provider in the US, and I have to check myself when I say that. But here we are today, north of, well it's 3.2 million customers utilizing T-Mobile for their broadband access provider. That's our number from the most recent earnings report. From nowhere, what are we doing? We are driving choice, competition, utility. You, we are now driving 5G capability and home internet capability into areas of the country where alternatives didn't even exist. And I can assure you that the rest of the world is looking at the US and looking at what is happening with 5G here and what's happening with fixed wireless access. This is going to be one of the most powerful use cases across the globe in 5G. Why? Because 5G is better. Spectral efficiency is much, much higher than it was in 4G. We have better spectrum. We have great mid-band assets, as do our competition, to leverage for these capabilities. 
So Fix Wireless is here, and there's a lot of chatter about how long can it survive, how long will it stay. It's here for good. And anybody that wants to bet against wireless in this space, be careful. Because think about the early days of LTE and how LTE got so much better year after year as our vendors provided greater features and capabilities and efficiencies for the spectrum using that technology. We are in the first innings of 5G. And it's going to be a long game in the 5G space. And the capabilities and performance that we can deliver will be way, way better than what we do today. And today, we're super competitive in many parts of the country. I loved Senator Lohan's comments, listening to him talk about how we can deliver great service and we need to deliver great service to the underserved in the US. Start really breaking this digital divide. We can do that quickly, at speed, and at pace with fixed wireless access. So I'm super excited about this one. Outside of that, we've all been talking about new use cases. And the good news is, yes, we're all desperate to see the next big killer app. But if you look at healthcare, enterprise, public safety, sports, pick your category things are starting to move. So rather than me talk through those things, I just wanted to run another video, won't be too long, just to give you a flavor of what's happening in the innovation space driven by T-Mobile. So if we could run the video, please. Halo is a very unique product where we bring an all electric car without a driver inside to your doorstep. To do that, we need a very reliable network that we can trust. Pano's mission is to provide actionable intelligence, leveraging advances in technology to deal with climate disasters, starting with wildfires. We can rely on T-Mobile's 5G connectivity to power Pano's AI solution. Recently, we had a situation where the camera noticed the smoke, called it out. We notified the Forest Service. That turned out to be 104 minutes faster. That two hours can mean the difference between thousands of acres burning. One of the things that 5G networks let us do is bring a more robust, higher fidelity type of entertainment to people than we could have done in the past. Formula One brings the highest energy to a sporting spectacle. Our goal for the race is to make this one of the most connected sporting events in the world. The quality of the connectivity that T-Mobile's network will bring to our event is exactly what we're looking for. Create incredible immersive experiences for our fans. PRISM's mission is to radically reimagine how students experience and learn mathematics utilizing the power of virtual reality and really draw them into why they're learning mathematics. T-Mobile was particularly helpful in bringing both the hardware needed as well as the internet connectivity needed to rural communities in the U.S. who wanted to use PRISM. I think this is just the beginning. We're only scratching the surface. I think sky's the limit for what that could look like in the future. So that's a very quick view of just a few of the things that we're working on. Critical stuff like enabling entities to fight wildfires more effectively. That's powerful. All the other end of the spectrum to, you know, making F1 more fun, right? There's so much happening, and I know folks are desperate to see more of this come to life and come to the market, but believe me, it's coming. And to repeat myself, we are in really the first second innings of this 5G story, so there's much to come, and 5G is finding its feet. So, so last but not least for, uh, from me, I do want to talk about Spectrum. And so 5G is great, but there is a but, and that's a single T but. The but is about US wireless leadership. And I'm, I'm very passionate about this topic. Obviously, you know, the T Mobile journey through Spectrum sagas of mid band, getting low band, getting more mid band with a sprint combination. That's been the heart. This is how we build and, and create powerful wireless businesses in the US. And we are in extraordinary times right now. I've been doing this almost 30 years in the US, almost 25 with T-Mobile. And never in my career have I seen an FCC lose auction authority. That's a big problem. Um, we need to get these things fixed. To give you an example of how that is a near-term problem, T-Mobile won a ton of licenses in the 2.5 gig space. And unfortunately, we're the only license winner that still has not been 
awarded their licenses. Those licenses we won do what? They cover rural America. They provide the opportunity for competition, home broadband, great new capabilities across huge swaths of geography in the US which are badly underserved today. And those licenses are stalled because of the loss of auction authority, the FCC. This is spectrum I could turn on tomorrow if we had the licenses granted. So we need to find our way through these things. We've offered and promoted STAs, so temporary author authorizations that could allow us to light the spectrum up. And we're engaged with the FCC in that dialogue. Today, we, we talked about how, give you another example of the importance of these licenses. There are 600 VA health locations underneath the footprint of these licenses that are stored out that would be better served, would improve services for our VA veterans if we could light that spectrum up. So there's a whole plethora of reasons why we need to move forward. And as the US, we have to start moving through getting our spectrum to market for all the reasons that we've talked about. So that's just today. The bigger issue is pipeline. And I have again, not in my career, sat in a position and looked forward and seen a pipeline which is bereft of spectrum. That's where we are today. We don't have any, there's some cats and dogs spectrum, but we don't have any line of sight to a major material auction that can advance this industry and all of the 5G activity and capabilities that we talked about. If we want to take home broadband and competition in that space to new levels in the US, we need spectrum. If we want to advance our 5G story and maintain the US leadership that we've established in 4G and we can take forward now in 5G and into 6G, we need spectrum. And inside the US, we have to solve those problems. Major economies and nation states are moving on the leadership space in wireless. And they're not fighting inside the country on who's got what spectrum and how to use it. They're attacking and looking to attack us and our leadership position in the US. So one ask for this audience, because I know this is it's a bunch of talent and you do great work. We have to get through our differences and we have to secure a powerful and secure spectrum pipeline for the US. It's not just important today, it's important for the next two, three decades that we get that pipeline established and we make sure we have a path to take forward this great industry in the US. So that's it from me. I thank you for your attention. I run over just a little. So um, we'll catch some of you later. Thank you very much.